Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at a compact and powerful bench power supply, the Fenris DPS150. This little unit delivers up to 30 volts and 5 amps of clean adjustable DC power. It features a bright digital display, multiple built-in protection features, and all of that at a very wallet-friendly price. So whether you are powering up an Arduino project or doing some serious prototyping work, this could be the perfect bench power supply you've been looking for. I've already been using a bench power supply in my home lab, but it's huge. It takes up too much space on the bench. And frankly, it's not the prettiest thing to look at either. The controls? Just old school analog knobs. It's super hard to dial in the exact voltage you want, especially when you need something precise like 3.3 volt or 1.8 volt. There is supposed to be a way to set the current limit too, but to this day, I still haven't figured out how to do it properly. In contrast, the DPS150 is sleek, compact, and feels futuristic. With the digital interface and precise control, setting the exact voltage and current limit is effortless. And let's be real, if you've got 150 watts of clean DC power on tap, that's more than enough for most electronics projects and lab experiments. I'm guessing that's why it is called DPS 150. All right, let's open it up and see what's inside the box. Here we've got the main unit, of course, along with a pair of banana plug cables, a USB cable, and a user manual. The unit feels sturdy and well built, more solid than I expected at this price. Let's take a quick look at the interface and controls. On the front panel, the first thing that grabs your attention is this large color display. It shows real-time voltage, current, power, and other key readings, and it's surprisingly sharp and easy to read for a budget-friendly supply. This is a 2.8-inch IPS screen. It's bright and it looks great, but what sets it apart is that it's adjustable. Yes, the tilt angle can be changed to match your view angle while you're working. The screen can be tilted up to 90 degrees, so you can always get a clear view whether you are sitting, standing, or working at an odd angle. Just below the screen, you'll find five physical buttons that handle most of the navigation and control. Home button. Press once to enter the system settings menu. Press again to return to the main interface. A long press will reset both the timer and the accumulated energy consumption to zero. End button. Use it to recall saved presets. You can store and quickly load up to six different combinations of voltage and current limit settings. Left and right arrow buttons. This lets you navigate through different menu items or data groups. Switch button. Used to confirm selections and a toggle between voltage and current adjustment modes. A long press switches between the main interface and the waveform display mode. The buttons have a satisfying tactile feel and are nicely spaced, making one-hand operation easy. Once you get used to it, navigation feels simple and intuitive. Moving to the top side, there's a small toggle switch for selecting the power input source, either PD or a DC input. Just make sure not to use them both at the same time. Right next to that, you'll find a USB Type-C port and a DC input power jack. Note that the USB-C port isn't for data transfer or charging other devices. Instead, it supports USB power delivery input. This means you can power the DPS-150 using a USB PD charger or even a power bank, making it highly portable. Of course, traditional DC input is also supported. Here, I'm using my laptop's power adapter to power the unit. Just make sure the voltage doesn't exceed 30 volts, and always double check the polarity of the power plug before connecting. 
You may have noticed the micro USB type B port. This is used to connect the DPS-150 to a computer via serial communication. It enables things like firmware updates and remote control through PC software, features that are pretty rare at this price point. We'll dive into the software side a bit later. On the right hand side, there is a dedicated run pause button. It allows you to instantly cut or resume the power output with a single press. No need to unplug or replug anything. It's a small detail, but a convenient feature, especially when you are testing or debugging circuits. And if you long press the run pause button, it locks all button inputs. A nice touch when you don't want to accidentally bump a setting and mess up your work. Long press it again to unlock. Now, down along the bottom edge, we've got the main DC output terminals, a pair of standard banana plug connectors, making it super easy to connect your load or test equipment. When the output is active, both the power button and the output jacks are illuminated, providing a clear visual cue that power is flowing. It's a small but thoughtful detail that helps prevent accidental connections while the unit is live. Right next to the output terminals, there's a rotary adjustment wheel, essentially a jog dial or rotary encoder. It's used to adjust the selected parameter, like quickly fine-tuning your voltage or current limits. Just press the adjacent mode button to switch between voltage and current, then turn the dial to set your desired value. It feels smooth, responsive, and intuitive, making precise adjustments quick and hassle-free. Overall, the build quality feels solid and everything is where you'd expect it to be. For such a compact device, the layout is surprisingly ergonomic. Now let's take a look at the PC software. Let me just give you a quick overview. One great feature of the DPS-150 is that you can control and monitor it directly from your PC using the free official software. You can adjust output settings, see real-time data, and even log voltage and current over time. Great for testing or debugging. There's also a live chart view to help you catch spikes or drops. We'll skip the full demo for now, but it works smoothly and it gives you precise control from your computer. Now, let me show you a few demos to see what the DPS-150 can do in real-world use. Safety is crucial and the DPS-150 has you covered. It comes with built-in protection features, including OVP, OCP, OPP, OTP, REP, and LVP. Let me show you a quick demo. I'll simulate a short circuit and show how the DPS-150 responds. Watch how it instantly switches to constant current mode and holds the current at the preset limit. These protection features are especially useful when you are working on early stage prototypes or if something goes wrong during soldering. DPS-150 delivers a clean, stable output, making it a very reliable power supply. DPS-150 can handle it like a charm. You can use it to power almost any electronics project. Here, I'm using it to run an internet radio I built. an old-school analog radio. And even to charge a LiPo battery, as long as you take the proper safety precautions. That said, I don't recommend using it for battery charging unless you really know what you are doing. A while back, I received this voltage regulator evaluation board but at the time, I wasn't quite sure what it was actually for. Now I know, 
It's designed to precisely step down the voltage from around 3 volts to something like 1.2 volt or 1.8 volt with impressive accuracy. You might be wondering, when would you ever need 1.2 or 1.8 volts? Fair question, but that's a topic for another time, so I'll keep the deep dive for now. With the DPS-150, we can dynamically adjust the input voltage within a specific range and observe that the output voltage from the regulator remains stable and unaffected. Sure, you could test this with other tools, but the DPS-150 makes the whole process much easier and more intuitive. Next up, let's try spinning some DC motors. Sometimes I get motors with no specification or documentation, and I'm left wondering how much current or power they actually draw. With the DPS-150, it's super easy to find out. Just hook it up, and you can monitor the current consumption in real time as the motor runs. Sometimes you want to know how much current your entire build draws, just to make sure your system can handle it safely and won't go up in smoke. Here's a stepper motor car I've been working on. I want to see how much current it pulls when everything is running. This is where the DPS-150 really shines. Using the DPS-150 to power the system, let me easily monitor the peak current draw when all four stepper motors are running at the same time. The DPS-150 is also great for projects using BLDC motors. Let me show you a BLDC motor drawer board I'm currently developing. When designing circuits or tuning firmware parameters, it's surprisingly easy to accidentally push way too much current, especially during early testing. But with the DPS-150, you can set a current limit ahead of time. So even if there's a design mistake or a software bug, as long as the current stays within the safe range of your driver ICs and MOSFETs, you can avoid major damage. Here's a quick demo. When I try to forcefully rotate the BLDC motor while it's actively holding its position, the control algorithm kicks in and it tries to restore it, generating a lot of torque in the process. That also means a sudden spike in current. Thanks to the DPS-150's current limiting feature, I can safely test this behavior without risking unexpected damage. Well, I guess that's all for today's video. There's a lot more this unit can do that I didn't have time to cover in this video. If you are interested, I definitely recommend picking one up and exploring it for yourself. If you are interested in trying it out, just search for FNIRSI DPS150 on your favorite online store. I'm sure you can find it. I'll also add a link to the official store in the description in case you want to check it out. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and let me know what tools or gear you'd like to see reviewed next. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.